Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. A few weeks ago on the Whiskey Vault, Rex and Daniel posed a question to their audience. Ask the Magnificent Bastards in the comments, what are the top five things that you're currently drinking? What's your favorite, what's the most popular? Now, this was a great idea. It kind of gives you a top 10 list of, they have a huge audience, right? So you're gonna boil this down to things that people really like. I was expecting a little bit more of a kind of like basic uh, list based off just knowing that how many people are there, but I was actually very impressed with the list. So much so that rather than doing the same thing and probably coming up with a lot of the same answers, I thought it'd be cool to give you guys alternatives at each different slot. So of their top 10, I'm gonna recommend kind of an, if you like this, then you'll love this kind of thing. So let's go ahead and just knock their list out real quick so you know what we're working with. And I'll also put chapters down below at each one of these slots if there's something that you're particularly interested in seeing what my recommendation would be. So their list is the Brooklady Classic Lotti, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Highland Park 12, Buffalo Trace, Green Spot, Ardbeg Ugadale, Wild Turkey Rare Breed, Port Charlotte 10, Lagavulin 16, and Redbreast 12. So this list is fantastic. I think we would all agree that this is a really good everyday drinker, if not slightly above that kind of list. Certainly whiskey enthusiasts will agree this is a really good top 10. So let's go ahead and just kind of get into my recommendations of if you like this, you'll like that. And number 10 is the Brooklady Classic Lotti. So this is a light, crisp, fruity whiskey that is unpeated. It's also got a little bit of a salty texture to it. It's very good, very easy to sip and relatively cheap. So I kind of went with a similar thing with the Buna Haben 12. Now Buna Haben 12 is gonna share a lot of those same notes. It's light, it's crisp, it's got fruit. It's also lemony, but it also has a little bit of an earthy tone to it as well. Now I love this because it's a similar price point and I think it's just a very easy to go from this to this. And number nine is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Now this one, ECBP, is not only fun to say, but it's also really good. You know, multiple times a year they put out a new batch. They do A, B, C, and then there's the month and the year. So it'll be like something like A, 1, 22. Um, if you enjoy Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, here's kind of the half answer. Go buy a different Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. You know, you have enough variation that you're going to enjoy it from batch to batch, but also it'll be similar and something that you know you already like. There is occasionally a bad one, but you know, watch channels like myself that cover ECBP and see if it's something that you might like or see if the, the general feel of the community is that it's not great. Here's a better suggestion, at least in my mind, to do something different, right? Something that's not just like, oh, go buy another one of the same. This is the Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve. And this is 120 proof. It's gonna be kind of heavy on the oak. It's gonna be very heavy on the vanilla. And I find that this drinks actually much smoother than you would expect. So this could be a very good option. And there it's about the same price. It's actually a little cheaper. So give this one a shot. And number eight is Highland Park 12. Now Highland Park is an interesting story and I get why a lot of people would start with this and have this one kind of as their daily sipper. However, I'm going to go out on a limb here and claim that I'm kind of in the camp with everybody, with a lot of other people thinking that Highland Park has kind of deteriorated in quality over the last few years. They swear they didn't change anything about their recipe, and I believe them, but I do think that the demand has made them have to choose barrels that are just barely 12 years old rather than maybe like a little bit longer and, and been able to keep there until it was perfect. However, this is why I have a good recommendation for you. It's the only bottle I don't have on hand is the Oban 14. So Oban 14 to me was one of my first intros to scotch. And so it's kind of like a perfect situation for exactly this list. But I find that the saltiness that the Oban 14, although it's not sherry finished like the Highland Park 12 is, I think it's a similar enough whiskey that you're going to get why I'm recommending it. And I think it's a great choice. I really do. I think it's a little bit more expensive than this one, but you know, we're not talking about a whole lot. So check out the Oban 14. I think it's a great suggestion. I think you're gonna love it. At number seven, we have Buffalo Trace. You knew this was gonna be on the list some, somewhere, of course. And it really got its popularity when people started freaking out about Pappy Van Winkle and the fact that you can't find Weller because basically Weller is just younger Pappy that didn't get there yet, et cetera, et cetera. But Buffalo Trace, the distillery, has made a huge name for itself and it makes a lot of sense that they're as popular as they are and that people go to this one first. However, at least in my area, this is actually still a hard item to find. So it's very possible you're not going to be able to. And even if you can, there's alternatives. And one of them is the almost empty bottle here, Elijah Craig, just regular Elijah Craig. I find that this is equally as good to this one. It's cheaper and I really, really just like this. This is one that I replace every time it's gone. Actually, you'll see, I, I tend to not kill bottles because I like to have them for review purposes, but you'll see this one gone within a few weeks. And number six is Green Spot. And I'll be honest, I was a little surprised to see this on this list only because Green Spot, I feel, is something that you just have to try before you know about. 
I think it's a fantastic whiskey. I absolutely think it deserves to be on that list. I was just surprised that enough people have tried it. So you might think the obvious choice if you like Green Spot is to do something like the uh, Chateau Montalena or the Chateau Leoville Barton. But these two are only if you like Zinfandel or Bordeaux. So in my mind, although these are fine choices, they I would be dishonest if I said that I loved them because I, I kind of don't. Um, I was actually, I kind of annoyed my audience a bit by not liking them more, but my tastes are my tastes, right? So here's what I'm gonna recommend instead. Up your game, go up to the yellow spot. Now here's why. This is more complex. This is more flavorful. This is subtle, but it's nice. And it's the subtlety, it's, it's like kind of elegant, like a black and white photograph. It's something that I find I really enjoy this one more than the green for reasons that are kind of ethereal. I can't really tell you why. This is soft, it's buttery, it's delicate, and it's nice. And I just really, really enjoy it. I have some like mental uh, ties to this. I, I was in a bar in New York City having a really good time the very first time I tried this, so it's a little nostalgic for me. But even if I take that away from it, I still think this is a better dream than this for reasons that are kind of hard to explain. But if you try it, I think you'll get it. And number five was the Ardbeg Oogadale. People call it Oogie, right? So this one also is almost gone, as you can see. This is one I've been putting off, killing off, because I really enjoy this as well. It's a sherried scotch made by Ardbeg, obviously, so it's also going to be kind of peated. But because of that, it puts it in a, a bit of a league of its own. So it's a very hard one to try to choose a replacement for that you're going to love. So whereas I could say something like maybe the Kilhoman Seneg, which would be a very good choice, I didn't want to go that direction. I wanted to go up the ladder of Ardbeg, at least in my mind. Try the Cory Vrecken. Cory Vrecken is one of my, actually, my it is my favorite of the core lineup of the Ardbeg expressions. And I think that if you go from this, this is going to have a different taste. It's going to be smokier, so be aware of that. It's not sherried, so be aware of that. But what it is, is taking this, which is almost like nice, you know, it's it's like, oh wow, it's smoky, but it's also fruity and sherried and wonderful, to just kind of being like, wow, okay, this is what Ardbeg can do. At least not from their yearly expressions, but this is their core lineup. This is the pinnacle of it, at least in my mind. And and I just think you'll love it because I love it. And if you're watching my channel, there's a good chance you like what I try. This is one of my favorite whiskeys I have on all uh, out of all of this bat behind me. So try the Cory Brecken. Just get it. It's super good. And number four is Wild Turkey Rare Breed Bourbon. Now this is not necessarily one of my favorite whiskeys, although the fact that it's almost gone should say something about it. It's just, maybe it was overhyped for me, or in my mind, it just wasn't worth the value over the Wild Turkey 101, which is an incredible value and you should definitely have on your shelves. But that is not what you're here to look for for a recommendation. So here's what I suggest. I'm gonna go Russell's Reserve Tenure. Now this is a bottle that's dedicated to Eddie and Jimmy Russell. It is awesome. I think it's just a really, really good bourbon. It's vanilla, it's easy to drink, it's 45%, it's also $45, so it's fairly cheap compared to this. And I think this could be a good one for your shelf and I think you'll love it. And number three is probably the hardest one to recommend on here. The, the Port Charlotte 10 is one of my favorite whiskeys. So finding an alternative for this was super hard and really I'm, I'm not entirely sure that I love the pick I did, but it is what it is. So here's, here's a couple of suggestions and then I'll give you my pick. So Port Charlotte 10 does yearly releases. Um, try to find one of those. They do the Isla Barley. Try to find one of those. And if, if you can afford to go for like a Dark Arts or an Octomore just for fun. But this is just so incredibly good. And the smoke is not offensive. It's heavy, but it's just, del it's like the perfect kind of way to represent smoke in a whiskey to me. Port Charlotte 10 is beautiful. So. The only other whiskey I can think of that I really, really like almost just as much is gonna be the Ardbeg 10. Now Ardbeg 10, you might think like, oh, why not like the 19 or something like that? I just find the 10, especially for the price point, which is a little bit cheaper than this, is, is just awesome. Like it's a super good daily drinker. It's not something that eh, maybe daily's a little, maybe like a weekly drinker because I don't know that everybody's drinking Isla, you know, really heavily peated something every single night. Maybe you are, but uh, I'm not. You know, I'm usually all over the place. Either way, the Ardbeg 10 is the closest thing I could come up with that would even hold a candle to the Port Charlotte 10. Just buy another Port Charlotte 10. And number two is Lagavulin 16, because of course it's going to be on this list. And it should be. It's a really good scotch. And I, people love Nick Offerman. They love this whole thing. And he's totally uh, nailing the marketing, right? So 
to that point, let's let's just kind of get some obvious ones out of the way. If you like Lag of Olin 16, check out one of the Nick Offerman editions. Try the um, the Distillers edition if you can get your hands on it. Those are usually like 11 to 12 years old, respectively. But here's what I what I don't love about Lag of Olin 16. A hundred dollars is a lot of money. You know, it's it's quite a bit to drop on a scotch. It's not like uh, outrageous, but a hundred dollars to drop on a whiskey is out of a lot of people's price point. And actually, it was out of mine for quite a while. As I was running this channel, I it took a long time for me to even review this because I just could never justify dropping a hundred dollars on a whiskey. So here's what I want to suggest to you, and I think this is a little bit out of out of left field here. I want you to cut it in half. I want you to go with the Lagavulin 8. This is half the age, but it's also half the price. And so for about 50 bucks, you're going to get a very similar whiskey to something that you already love, just at a lower price point, a little lower, um, lower age, but it's going to have a lot of the same flavors. It's going to be nice, crisp, lemony, smoky. And I think that's really about all that's going on, but that makes it an awesome daily sipper. So go for the 8. I think you're going to love it. And if not, just keep drinking your 16 or try one of the other editions. And number one is Redbreast 12. Now, I am so happy to see an Irish whiskey at the top of this list, and I actually totally agree with this. They refer to themselves as the quintessential pot still Irish whiskey. So yes, pretty much everything I'm gonna recommend, I don't necessarily know is better than this, but that's not the intent. It's not, if you love this, I'm gonna give you something better. It's, if you like this, you'll also like this. So the obvious choice that comes to mind is Green Spot, right? It's also a pot still Irish whiskey. It's similar in a lot of ways, but this was already on the list. You're already probably drinking this. So let's move on from that one. Now, one that's hard to find is going to be the Red Breast 12 Cast Strength. If you find this, don't sleep on it. Don't hesitate. Whatever it costs, if you find it in a store, don't buy it secondary because that's lame. If you find this in a store, buy it. It is amazing. It's so amazing. There's like none of this left because I don't want to finish it. Um, so, so good, but hard to find. So here's one that's easy to find. And I have the old box of this because I'm slacker and I haven't bothered doing a review, but the new stuff is the exact same whiskey, just new marketing material. So this is the Powers Three Swallows. Now you might be saying like, well, that's not really the same thing. And you're right. They're completely different price points. If you are drinking this, expecting this, you're going to be disappointed. But what you're going to find in this is smooth, Nice, easy to drink, apples, lemon, Irish whiskey. It's gonna be very good. And I think you're gonna like it because if you like this, you're probably gonna like this. So thank you all for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. This is you know, been awesome. I'm really, really happy to have made this video for you guys. I hope that you have some new things to try. And if you watch this and you have other opinions about things that would be better than what was over here and you want to recommend some stuff, please do it down in the comments. It'll rise to the top. People will love it and people will get more ideas. Um, on a completely other topic, two things I want to mention. So check out the 2022 Whiskey Challenge because it's almost over. I'll put a link down to that below. But also, I run another channel called Dungeons and Drams, which you might not know about. And Dungeons and Drams is a whiskey based D&D campaign, which I'm running with several other people from the Whiskey Tube community. Jason from Mash and Drum is there, uh, Clifton from Bourbon Bites, Ed from The Rocket Review, Adriana from Whiskey Mountains, and my friend Molly, who is a runs a type one diabetic block. So all of us play IDM the campaign. It's going awesome. It's really, really fun. Um, if you don't necessarily know if you want to jump in in the middle of a campaign, I wouldn't recommend it. Check out one of the recap videos, but I'll put a link down to the channel below. I would love some more traffic on there because we're trying really hard. We're putting a lot of effort into it and we need some more eyes on it. So go check it out. I think it will be right up your alley and we have a blast doing it. So I think you'll have a blast watching it. All right. Thank you everybody for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Cheers.